Chris Broussard joining me. Now, Chris, people think you're an NBA guy, and you are, but football. My favorite sport. And you're actually a great football guy. You and I were talking during the break. So before the season started, Joy was here. I said the eight best quarterbacks I've ever seen, all things considered, durability, arm strength, all this stuff. And I put Drew Brees in my eight, and I didn't have Aaron Rodgers. And I said to people, Aaron gets hurt more. I think Aaron's harder to coach. Aaron's not as good a leader. And frankly, Aaron kind of ad libs out of good plays. Now, I think Aaron's probably ninth. Drew Brees is ridiculous. Drew Brees is awesome. Here's what I would say. I think Drew Brees is in the perfect system now. And he, his coach is the perfect coach for him. It's kind of like Steve Nash and Phoenix with Dan Tony. It's just all come together. Now, remember a few years ago when they didn't have that running game, they would go seven and nine every year. So I don't. Th I would like to see Rodgers in, and I. I think this year should be Mike McCarthy's last. It will, barring some, you know, miraculous run to the Super Bowl. I would like to see him get with a coach who is more in sync and can maximize his abilities. Like I think Peyton's doing with Breeze. I think obviously Andy Reid does with his quarterbacks. So if if Rodgers can get God, in that type of that system, throw. I think he'll be better. God, look at that. I'm not ready to throw Rodgers under the bus I'm not just throwing yet. him under the bus, but look at the NFL records held by Breeze. He's, it's an avalanche. Yeah, look, Breeze is tremendous, but what do, what do you do with those three straight seven and nine seasons? Hey. What do you do? They had no O-line because he signed a fat contract, and the bottom line was he signed a huge contract, so they couldn't afford an O-line or a defense. Then, then he said, I'll take a little less money. And now he's got a good draft or two. I'm telling you, he's got the help that he needs. Look, he's man, you're tremendous. just off. You're just throwing qualifiers in there. <laughs> it's not like Aaron Rodgers hasn't had help. I'll tell you, every bar you go to in America, it's Brady Rodgers, Brady Rodgers. All I'm saying, I'm going to squeeze Drew Brees in that bar argument. Well, look, Brees is the MVP right now. Going right? to win a second Super Bowl. If he wins his second Super Bowl, it's going to be hard. Winning is huge. Winning is huge, what especially was for quarterbacks. What was the difference between Brady and Peyton in the end? It was Super Bowls. Right. What was the difference between Marino and Elway in the end? It was Super, Super Bowls. Bowls. If Breeze wins another, and I get all the stats and all the playoffs and all the Super Bowls, then I'm, I'm just to, at yeah. the bar. I'm just squeezing my guy into the argument. He, let, let him win this Super Bowl, and he can God, be in the argument. You're tough. He can be in the argument. So, uh, listen, you have been on this thing for years about the Warriors. I've always thought they're very Silicon Valley. It's all, they all connected. Bro, Steph Curry takes a little vacation. They're a mess. They're a ma Kevin Durant's taking. <laughs> he's reacting to me on Instagram. <laughs> well, I, look, I, we can talk. You can talk on the court, off the court. Let's go off the court first. Steve Kerr said it a few days ago. Steph is the short Tim Duncan. I was saying this years ago yep, at our yep, other network. Yep. I said, look, just like Duncan set the tone for Popovich to be able to yell at all his players and, you know, everybody to be in line with what Pop does because Duncan did it. Same thing with Steph. This team has been about selflessness, strength in numbers. That was the model before KD got there. Having fun, loosey-goosey, all that. Steph set that tone. Don't take yourself too seriously. You know, look, he showed that he was selfless when he wanted Kevin Durant on the team. A lot of superstars would have been like, I just want my second MVP. We should have beat Cleveland. We'll beat them next year. No, I don't want Kevin Durant. I, and I, and I wouldn't have been mad at him. I'd, I would argue no superstar except maybe LeBron would have said, right. come on. LeBron's it. Right, right. And, and so Steph said that now. So th here's my one question. I'm getting a little bit ahead of where we were, but my one question about the Warriors going forward this year, because I think after this, Durant's gone. They have always, that's always been their, one of their strengths is their atmosphere, their vibe, yes. their demeanor, the yes. fun. Yeah. There's music blasting it, practice, all that. If Durant and Draymond for the next five months of the season, six months, are going to have just a business relationship. That's it. Just be co-workers, and it, it affects the vibe of the team. There's this unspoken tension there. Oh, you try to smile at each other. You laugh at each other's jokes a little bit, but you're no longer cool. You're no longer friends. That could disrupt this team to the point 
where it could stop them from winning a championship. People think I'm crazy about this, and let's segue into LeBron. 16 games in with Miami, they were 9-7. and seven. 16 games in back with Kyrie, 9-7. and seven. 16 games back with the Lakers kids, 9-7. and seven. Next couple of nights, Atlanta, Cleveland, they'll be 11-7. and seven. I think it's working. I think it's working. I don't think they're Golden State, but I think they are ahead of schedule. I would agree because the 9-7 and seven in Miami and Cleveland – Seemed like the sky was falling, right? <laughs> this 97 is like, oh, the Lakers are rolling. I've been saying it. I think they could be the second best team in the West. If Houston gets it together, maybe third best. But they're elite. They're an elite team. And here's the thing, and I, I hope LeBron realizes this. Don't be so caught up in, I need my second star. Now, next year when you get, who knows, KD, Anthony Davis, whoever, great, get them. But for this year, it's not the worst thing in the world to see LeBron James without a star, another star. Remember what he did in Cleveland his first go-round. Second guy was like Mo Williams, Delonte West, guys like that. They won 66 and 61 games. He was two-time MVP, and I think he was good enough. He wasn't ready mentally, and he knew that, so he went to Miami. But he, he was good enough physically to lead that team in Cleveland to a championship, I believe, his last year. Now he's got the mental strength. He's got the experience. He's a smarter player than he was in Cleveland. I'm enjoying watching this. I didn't even bring up in 2015 against the Warriors when Kyrie and Love are hurt in the finals. They're up 2-1 with Matthew Dellavedova and guys like that playing his supporting cast. So if LeBron embraces this and says, okay, next year we're getting somebody – but this year, I'm good enough to take us to elite status without a second star. If you would have do it, uh, all the doubters in the world, if I'd have said to you um, two months ago, they're going to get to the Western Conference Finals, they're going to lose in five to the Warriors. Nobody thought that was going to happen. There wasn't. I, I mean, you and I are on the LeBron's going to win 48 games. I we, said 53, and he's MVP. Okay, I said 48, and I didn't care about the MVP. But I think right now he is the MVP, and I think they're on track to win about you 50. Think he's I've got Giannis right now, but LeBron's closing fast. Good seeing you. <laughs> Chris Broussard, can you believe Kevin Durant? I love Kevin Durant. I kind of, in a weird way, I wish Aaron Rodgers would go on social media and take shots at me. I kind of like it. It's fun. I, I have an opinion. He's, he's paying attention. Well, no, I mean, I have an opinion, and it, there's nothing wrong with reacting to it. I've said Durant and Aaron Rodgers, are, they're sensitive guys. They hear everything, and they react to some of it. We can't bang on guys because young guys in their 20s and 30s react to social media. This is what I say with those guys. As long as it doesn't impact them on the court. Some guys can hear everything, and it impacts them on the court. There's a voice in their head. If he can respond to everything people say and still go out and play great basketball, more power to him. Good seeing you, buddy. Yep. Chris Broussard.